uh, Dr. Gypsy Amber D'Souza is going to talk to us about HPV infection in HPV positive oropharyngeal cancer uh, and the partners of those patients. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you and on behalf of my co-authors to talk with you about oral human papillomavirus infection today. Um, the presentation I'm going to show has slightly updated uh, data, just a small increase in the number of patients we included compared to that that was distributed in the press release. Um, but we will be getting these uh, updated numbers into a press release that will be available later today. And all of the inferences are the same. It's just a small change in the numbers. So you can use either set of numbers. Whoops, there we go. Um, so as background, human papillomavirus, or HPV, is a common sexually transmitted infection. The majority of oropharyngeal cancers in the United States are now caused by HPV, and the incidence of HPV-related oropharyngeal cancer is increasing significantly. So some of the patients with this diagnosis worry about oral HPV transmission and the cancer risk to their partners and spouses. So we enrolled a series of 166 cases with HPV-related oropharyngeal cancer, and 94 of these had spouses or long-term partners who were also enrolled in our study. The methods of this study, this was considered a pilot study where our goal was to explore whether oral HPV infection was elevated among these spouses of our patients with HPV-related oral pharyngeal cancer. The gold standard for knowing whether you have an HPV-driven tumor is to test for HPV DNA in the tumor. All of our cases had oncogenic HPV in their tumor. When you're looking at people without cancer, we don't have a um, validated FDA-approved test for measuring oral HPV infection. But the best test that we do have is to take an oral, and rinse, oral rinse and gargle sample and to look in those exfoliated oral cells for HPV DNA. It's a research test that doesn't have perfect sensitivity or specificity, but it's the best available test we have and has been consistently linked in case control studies to increased odds of HPV-related oral pharyngeal cancer. So we collected these oral rinse and gargle samples and tested for HPV DNA in our cases and in their spouses. When we looked among our cases who were primarily male, we saw that two-thirds of them had HPV DNA in their oral exfoliated cells. So HPV DNA that is leaking from the tumor and is detectable in their exfoliated cells. And a little over half of our cases had HPV 16, which is the HPV type that's responsible for the majority, around 90 percent, of these HPV-related oropharyngeal cancers. We took a second oral rinse sample around a year later after they'd completed their therapy and the vast majority of these cases no longer had any HPV-16 DNA detectable. When we looked in our spouses, and again, so these were uh, long-term partners or spouses of our cases, we're looking in their oral rinse samples and com we compared their prevalence to recent data that was published in NHANES, which is a population-based uh, study representative of the U.S. population, and we compared our results to the results in NHANES from a similar age range to our spouses, 50 to 65 years old. We saw in our female partners, 5 percent of them had an oral HPV infection, which was very similar to the oral HPV prevalence in the general population of that age. And only two of our partners had an HPV-16 infection, both detected at very low copy numbers. We only had a small number of male partners in our study, but none of them had oral HPV-16 infection. So taken together, these results were very reassuring that oral HPV prevalence is not more common among these spouses of HPV-related oral pharyngeal cancer patients than people in the general population. This suggests these partners have been exposed in the past but have effectively cleared these infections. We also asked about cancer history in our spouses, and we did a detailed oral cancer screen. This was a visual oral examination by a head and neck surgeon in a subset of around uh, two-thirds of our spouses. There were no oropharyngeal precancers or cancers detected in our spouses. When we asked about their cancer history, none of our enrolled spouses had had oropharyngeal cancer. 
although three of our cases reported a previous partner who had had oral pharyngeal cancer. So their current spouse had not had oral pharyngeal cancer, but they had had a spouse in the past who had had oral pharyngeal cancer. We also asked about cervical cancer. We did have one partner in our study who had had cervical cancer and two partners who had had a cervical precancer. Uh, we also had two spouse, uh, two part, I'm sorry, two cases who had had a previous partner who had had cervical cancer. This supports the transmission of HPV to the mouth from oral sex, and having uh, cervical cancer and cervical precancer suggests a long-term cervical HPV infection, and oral sex on an infected, uh, someone who has a genital HPV infection, is known to be a risk factor for transmission of HPV to the mouth, and this supports that transmission. So in conclusion, this is the first study to examine oral HPV prevalence among spouses of HPV-related oral pharyngeal cancer patients, and it's very reassuring that the oral HPV prevalence was similar to that observed in the general population. This suggests that risk of HPV-related cancer remains low among these spouses of patients with HPV-related oral pharyngeal cancer and underscores that oral HPV infection is common. Many individuals become infected but are able to clear these infections and most will not get cancer. Thank you.